Okay, so he mentioned that there were two opinions, Sfaradim and Ashkenazim. We mentioned Pata Baba Kisanin could be bread that other things were mixed into, like honey, sugar, oil, spices, things like that. And the Sfaradim hold that so long as you can taste that mixture in the dough, it becomes a mizonot and not a hamotzi. That would make sense with the pizza, because they use... Wait, 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 wait. Don't make any sense sorry, from pizza. Sorry, sorry. He's right. That's what he's trying to say. I got it. That's yeah. what I'm trying to help <laughs> you out here. Okay. The Ashkenazim say no. Unless the main... Unless it's a honey cake. So what if you could taste a little bit of honey in my challah? If it's not a honey cake, if the ikan, the main thing is not the honey, the sugar, the spices, this is a hamotzi. Mm. And he mentioned here that it's good for the Ashkenazim to be careful not to make their initial hamotzi on a bread that has a dispute which blessing you make on it. I mean, make your hamotzi on bread that everybody would agree with is hamotzi. And during the meal, if you want to eat this bread that's sweet, then that's fine. Okay, so it counts on your blessing of hamotzi. This was his suggestion. Based on what I've said above, I'm in the bottom paragraph of page 436. Chalot, bread, or rolls. Hamtsuyot metukot, which are prevalent nowadays, and they're very sweet. But the majority of the dough is water, mixed with water. They put some eggs and sugar in there. And you could tell that these rolls are sweet. According to the custom of the Sfaradim, you make a mizonot and al michia. This is not chala. So that would mean that the chalas that they sell a lot in these stores could not be used as motzi. Right, on Shabbat. That's the way Ben bechol or ben Shabbat, whether it's weekdays or on Shabbat. Unless you're eating enough to be considered making your meal on them. It would be better to eat these rolls in the middle of the meal. And if you're coming to eat them on their own, you make a hamotzi and berkat mazon. Okay, basically, don't worry, don't worry, guys. We're doing this again in 30 years. And, um, the time of page 47. Question about 437. 437. Yeah. Last time, last time we said, if, if you eat something that, that has filling in it, you take out the filling in it, and you make the proper blessing for that, and then the pocket bread is still considered a pocket we're bread. We're no longer talking about pocket bread. Now we're talking about this other opinion. There were a few opinions of what is considered pata babakizani. One was pocket bread. Oh. The other is any dough that has things mixed into it, aside mm-hmm. from water and salt. Right? But I just want to make it. Yeah. So if you then just eat, eat the bread after you've taken all the filling, I wrote down something, which I'm not, I'm not sure what I wrote, that you're considered, it's considered just bread, and you do mazono, or you don't do mazono? You do hamotzi. I think that's what it is, um, right? I got confused on that part. <laughs> At the end there. Okay. That, that's just on the, on the top, okay. No, sorry. We said sorry. that even if you take out the filling, it's still a mizonot. It still keeps its original blessing. Because oh. of the intention of it, right? Right. Okay, thanks. Okay, now people would like to then use this malad and say, Oh, all the bread that we eat is mizonot. Why do they do that? Because they don't understand it. Mm, better yet. Why do people like to make mizonot on bread? Oh, because then they have to save your mizonot. They don't have to save your kind of mizonot. Yeah. People are ter- there's, a, there's a phobia of grace after meals in the Jewish community. It takes too long. It takes too long. Yeah. It takes too long. It's like 30 pages I can read now. I'd rather make yeah. a mizonot than I'll read one paragraph. This all stems from laziness and from the fact that we have a really long Brikad Amazon. <laughs> if we used our handy dandy short Brikad Amazon, it wouldn't be so problematic. The original Brikad Amazon is very short. The Rambam's Brikad Amazon is very short. <coughs> the fact that we don't teach everybody in the world to use it. And what's the problem here? People think, well, I've got to see the long version. The long version is important. You're right, it is important, the long version. But guess what? You're not gonna say the mitzvah of Brikad Amazon is biblical. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, you must have a proper intention for every word in Berkhan Amazon. You can't space out 30 seconds of Berkhan Amazon. So you have to make a Berkhan Amazon that you have enough attention span to have biblical kavanah with. 
And therefore, <coughs> saying that short Bekanu has own solves two problems. <coughs> it solves saying a blessing in vain because you don't have the proper intentions for it. And it solves half the world making a mizonot on things which are really hamutzi because they wouldn't be lazy to say a blessing if it really took them one minute to say Bekanu Mizon. <laughs> in our yeshiva, that's what we do, that's what we say. Now, there are a few different versions, fine, who cares that? They're all the ones that come from the proper to Mechanim. There's a version of the Rambam that's found in Mishnah Torah. There's a version that I've given out to many people from Rabbi Yitzchak Abadi in Lakewood. There's a version that I once brought and I gave out of, um, you have a copy of this, it will be Lazar Pekudet, the Pekudat Lazar, one of the famous Sephardic rabbis of Yerushalayim. There's a few different versions. Nice to collect these. Uh, I still yeah, actually, if you want to see sitter. That's what I can uh, see. You've seen one, you just didn't know that it was. Um, I'll, we'll, we'll find one and bring one in. Um, if you want to look in the brown books at all, if you... Can I ask someone to hand in a few brown books? We have the Hebrew or just the Spanish one? Oh, the Spanish one. Spanish one. I don't think we have a short Hebrew one in here. Did you see? I don't, I don't no, remember. I, I, I don't think I saw that. Yeah, I know. I think it was a wrong opposite or be like, yeah, I got it. Have you seen his beer cup? It's interesting because the old is a short one, but it's for women. If you look on page 617. 617? 617. Ben Ben digamos, let's read the oh, footnote at the bottom of the page. Why is it in Spanish? Oh. Why, 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 this you, song. My used to sing this at the table when he came visit us. Ben digamos, yeah. Yeah. altissimo. From Tangier, they speak Spanish. Okay. This yeah. song is popular among many Spanish-speaking Sephardic communities. What does that mean, Spanish-speaking Sephardic communities? We, the Sephardic Tangier. community split into two after Spanish expulsion. The Spanish-speaking Sephardic communities and the Arabic-speaking Spanish communities. Oh. And so there are really two different Sephardic traditions. Some would define East and West Sephardim, but really there's no clear line. Ladino was spoken in the Spanish-speaking Sephardic community. Um, it is written in Spanish, not Ladino, as some think. Yeah. It and it features a distinct and well-known melody. In fact, this melody is used in all kinds of silot in the Spanish and Portuguese community, not just for this. The custom is to sing it while eating a bread-based meal because it is similar in meaning to Verkanamism. <laughs> Many communities, such as the Spanish and Portuguese, are careful to sing it after Birkat I mean, after the regular grace, after meals, out of a concern that it would otherwise serve as a substitute. Meaning, if you sing this before, you may not actually be able to say Birkat because it already counted as Birkat Interesting. The origins of Bendigamos are unclear. It was traditionally sung by the Jews of Turkish descent, although some speculate that it originated among the Spanish-speaking Jews of Bordeaux, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Where the song is still sung in French translation today. Others suggest that it was devised by the Sephardic Jews of Spain around the time of the Inquisition as a shrewd way to fulfill the obligation of Rekhan Mazon without incurring the wrath of their oppressors. Meaning, technically, this song is not a Jewish song. So you could sing it as any other Christian prayer you'd be singing after you have your meal. Another theory suggests that it was written for women who did not know Hebrew and would otherwise be unable to fulfill their obligation of reciting Rekhan Mazon. Just to make that clear for people, because they're probably like, just said you can sing any Christian song. No, no I didn't yeah. say you can sing yeah, any Christian no, like, When the Inquisition yeah. is looking for people who are praying Hebrew prayers, it would be very convenient to have a Spanish prayer. Like, just like you had Latin prayer books of the Jewish prayers. Correct, prayer correct. Books. So the tune for this is... Um, yeah. uh, and I don't know how to read the words properly, so I'm not going to make a fool out of myself. Well, but why, why don't they have an English... Ask my wife to read the tune with them. Very good. It goes, the tune is... Bendigamos al altissimo na 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 Almost any old school Sephardic house you went to, especially those from North Africa, who many were um, uh, exiles of Spain, this was sung after every meal after Birkat Amazon. The same way, you'll notice, that in many, many Sephardic communities, before we do Birkat Amazon, there's a song that we sing. Which song? Not in a Sephardic community. Which ones? What's the limits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sumi <laughs> <laughs> 
Adonai. I actually was in a conference, of the Crypto Jewish Conference of America, when I was here in San Diego, oh, cool. and one of the professors, she uh, she told me that this tune. Now listen, if it's true or not, I can't tell you, but she told me that this tune is actually probably originated in Spain when the Jews still lived in Spain, because there are certain plays in the Spanish Jewish tradition that are sung to this tune. Oh. This is a tune that was popular mm -hmm. before the expulsion in Spain. And which tells you all these are all Jewish traditions. Now the reason we sing that Surah Mishalom is because it's technically a song version of the Birkat Mazon. And uh, many so rabbis see. believe that they did that to help, let's say, the, the younger children or the people who were illiterate around the table. They knew that well, after you sing a song a number of times, you already know the words, so they were able to sing Birkat Mazon. Um, even though they didn't know how to read the Birkat Mazon. Does that count? It, should, yeah, it would count. In fact, the Vilna Gon believed that you couldn't sing that song before Birkat Mazon. Because if you did, you would not be able to say Birkat Mazon anymore. As you'll find in the Ashkenazi communities, many are particular not to sing that song at a meal where they eat bread. Or to do it after Birkat Mazon. So if the Birkat Mazon was short, we would solve this problem of Mizonot bread. People would stop pretending. You go to pizza stores, they tell pizza is mezonot. And then you go to the shawarma store, and they tell you this lafa, we put apple juice in it, mezonot. And then you go to the bagel store, this bagel, we put some eggs in it, mezonot. Everywhere you go, all of a sudden the bread became mezonot. The challah you get is mezonot. This is you get, uh, now, like I told you, the marshmallow fluff, chocolate challah spread. This, this is a that could be actually mezonot. That could be. It could also be a shackle. I don't know. Depends how much challah is in there compared to the chocolate. But when it comes to to halakha, it seems like people are avoiding to say Birkat Amazon. And if we could just solve that problem by issuing them the original version of Birkat Amazon, they wouldn't, uh, they perhaps wouldn't worry so much. So is this the original? One? It's not the original, but this is definitely one that works. If you want to sing this one, this would work. And what is the original? Uh, that's a great question. So original, original, I might not have, but the Rambam is pretty authentically coached to the original. The Rambam is Birkat Amazon. We're ordering a set of Rambam for the synagogue. Someone just donated. Oh, and so it'll be here soon. soon. And Mishnah Torah? Or it yeah, it's a Hebrew set, but at least will let us reference things. Oh. I was looking for a Rambam. Um, I, need a, I have it on my phone. Listen to the, the short version of Berkhan Amazon. This is not exactly the Rambams, but it's very it's based off of the Rambams of Berkhan Amazon. Because you know how long the regular one is. <laughs> so here's a... Somebody want to time me when I do it so we can find out how long it is? Yeah. How fast are you going to do it? <laughs> I'll do it with Kavana. Should we get you some bread? <laughs> uh, yeah, we might as well. Express Kavana. Who's ordering falafel? <laughs> <laughs> it has to be Nisham. Uh, what's it called? Uh, yes. 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 <laughs> no, Pach is real. It's okay, my phone freezes. Awesome. Here. Are you okay, who's timing me? All right. ברוך אתה השם, אלוקינו מלך העולם, הזן את העולם כולו בטובו, וכן בחסד ורחמים, ומפרנס לכל, ומכין מזון לכל בריאותיו אשר ברא, ברוך אתה השם, הזן את הכל. נודה לך השם אלוקינו, על שנחלת לאבותינו, ארץ, חמדה, טובה וחווה, ברית ותורה, ועל שהוצאתנו מארץ מצרים. על הכל אנחנו מודים לך, ומברכים שמך, ברוך אתה השם, על הארץ ועל המזון. רחם השם אלוקינו על ישראל עמך, ועל ירושלים עירך, ועל מקדשך, ועל מלכות בית ירושלים שלך, ובני ירושלים במהרה בימינו, ברוך אתה השם, בוני ירושלים. ברוך אתה השם אלוקינו מלך העולם, אבינו מלכנו המלך הטוב ומטיב לכל. הוא היטיב ומטיב והיטיב לנו. הוא גמלנו, הוא גמלנו, הוא יגמלנו לעד חן וחסד ורחמים, וכל טוב, אמן. 44 seconds. 44 oh, wow. seconds. 45. 45. 45. Okay, maybe 45. <laughs> you took a long time so, to get to it. That explains why uh, about maybe a quarter way through Birkat Hamazon people go like this and they leave. Because they're all doing because the Rambam version by heart. Yeah. The, right. Yeah. 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 Like, wait, I'm still in the first sentence. How did you finish yeah. the whole thing? Yeah. Don't want yeah. people leave out the Rachman. Oh, so the, the Vilna Gaon also suggests that you can leave out the Harachamans during the week. The Harachamans are not crucial. That whole end part of Birkan Amazon is an addition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After, in the Ashkenazi version, after you finish that last blessing, the Harachamans are... There, I remember when I, I was first learning that, uh, the Birkan Amazon, like, I kept, it was like, oh, and then this guy added this one, and then this one, and I was like, everybody's adding so much, like, it ended, like... And if it would work, that would be fine. Meaning, if everyone said it and they had kavanah and they washed on bread, yeah. then fine. But it's that's not the situation. But isn't it also 
the Racham on the Rim. I mean, Sfardim, usually someone will say it in a main in many tables. Right, it's, so it's, it's, it's a text on it also. But that's, right. maybe on Shabbat. I don't know that during the week that's the... How Bills always tell the guys in the yeshiva, you could finish Bukhara Mazon, say the Harachamans while you walk from the dining room to the yeshiva. But that's okay. not already a... So you can download a PDF of this. Which one is this? Can I see it? Yeah, oh, it's in English. It's a bigger one. The shortened version of Bukhara Mazon, this one is from Ariel Bartzad, Oki studied in our yeshiva. Oh, I know. And this is from Rabbi Elazai Raphael Halevi Ibn Tovu, who was the Abedin of Yerushalayim. And this is the one that Repair it says. This version, that's the one I gave you a copy of. Is there a Hebrew version? I have. Anybody wants a copy of this? It's, it's, uh, yeah. I'm happy to send it. You can it. download yeah. a PDF. I never really made a copy of it. Put it on your phone anywhere you what? go. What? I don't think I made a copy of it. Okay, I can send I have. I have both versions of PDF. You break ahead. Which one do you want? They, I can get you a Hebrew. I have a Hebrew version of it. Um, okay, so now that we said that, let's uh, do this. So I know that's the letter of the law, but I mean, what about the spirit of it? If is it uh, is it important to do the whole Birkat Hamazon if you? So that's a very good question, and this is the whole Birkat Hamazon. To say the long version of the Birkat Hamazon, yes, if you will not be lazy when saying it, and therefore you'll wash on all breads that are breads, and two. If you can have the proper kavanah throughout it. So, for example, what I'll do is on, on Shabbat, I say the longer version. Yeah. I, just I have time. I'm not running anywhere. I'm washing anyways. Uh, during the week, though, I see it as a stringency that leads to many leniencies that are not correct. On the other hand, when you have something short, you have a tendency to do it fast and not think about it. When you have something long, you have a tendency to focus... Oh, or, or you, or, or you space out, or, or you space, space out. out. Yeah. So I think I mean I think there's like yeah, a six good. Six one half dozen. Yeah. Other. Yeah. It's like yeah. you know you have, you, I, that comes to it. That's a personal thing. I think. Wait wait, I mean, wait 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 wait. You have to decide that on your own. Now, the problem with the long one is, you can, go in and out of concentration on it. You know? Concentration. So, well. Uh, <laughs> wow, you might want to wonder, and you got to go back to focus yeah. again, and you know, in and out. Yeah. Sometimes less is more. <laughs> All right, I want to read to you. Uh, if we came to study this, this is a. Uh, There's a book called Meim Nuchot. Meim Nuchot was written by a Moroccan rabbi called Rabbi Rafael Berdugo. Rabbi Rafael Berdugo writes, Tochachat Megule, an open rebuke to those that shechivu pihem v'higdilu l'shonam. They open their mouths wide and they make their tongues long, but tefilot, meaning they extend the tefila longer than it should be. Ubakashot, and they have all kinds of extra prayers they add, minim minim shonim, all kinds of strange prayers. Vehashbaot, all kinds of oaths and vaskarot shemot malachim. They mention all kinds of angels' names. These things are all, I'm being nice, nonsensical additions. It's inappropriate to make the tefillah longer or to expand on it more than our fathers and our rabbis already did. That's enough. What they did, that's enough for us. And it's all these additions of the tefillah, it would be better instead of adding to the tefillah, add actions. To become a better person. Leave evil and do good. Instead of praying about leaving evil, actually leave evil and do good. Leave the Sidur the way it is, stop adding to it, you become a better person. Don't make the Sidur a better Sidur. That doesn't help anybody. And then he uh, Peretz quotes the Lev Chaim, or Chaim Palaji. Chaim Palaji was, Google him, one of the incredible Tzedekim of the Sephardic community. I believe he was in Turkey, but don't hold me to that. He says, I bring as my witnesses heaven and earth. I heard from the brilliant, famous genius, my grandfather, the rabbi Chikrelev, the light of the moon. Why is it called the light of the moon? Yareach is the acronym of his grandfather's name. Rav Yosef Raphael Chazan. Yareach, the moon. That's why it's called the light of the moon. <laughs> he would say, it was common in his mouth to hear, if he would know for certain that the Jewish people would pray with absolute kavanah, 
היה מחסר התפילה עד כמעט מברוך שאמר ויוצר ותפילת י"ח ולא עוד. He would, ולשנות מנהג ראשונים, he would edit the סידור. And cut out everything before ברוך שאמר, and everything after שמונה עשרה. From ברוך שאמר, שמע, עמידה, nothing else on the סידור. He would take all of it out. If he had a promise, the Jewish people would pray with Kavana. He comes to Shachrit, Shachrit takes an hour. Imagine if Shachrit took 20 minutes. 30 minutes, but 30 minutes of Kavana. You know, what's the most important part of the Tefillah? In the morning? Shema. Shema. Shema is biblical. Amida is the second most important. It's rabbinic though. Shema is biblical. By the time you get to Shema, you've done the blessings of the morning, you've done maybe the korbanot, you've done, if you're in a Sephardic show, the patach eliyahu zechulatok. If you're in a regular, you did all the psukei, the zimra, the hallelujahs, the az yashir, the, then the blessings of the Shema. By the time you get to Shema, you're dead. You're, you're, there's no more kavana left inside of you. On Shabbat it's even worse. You add another 30 tefillah to that. It says, it's, a, it's a not normal. How, much, how do you expect the person to have so much kavana? It says, he, would, he knows that it's against what all the other generations did. If he would have been promised, that that's what the Jewish people will do, he would do it. אבל מה נעשה? ברור כאן ידעו? אין לי אות מופת וראיה ברורה שעל ידי זה שיהיה מחסר, שיהיו אומרים בכוונה. He says, I don't have a guarantee that if I shorten the tefillah, everybody will have כוונה. ואם כן, מה הועילו חכמים בתקנתם? So then what would my addition help? לחסר דברים משום כוונה, ולא יהיו מכוונים. So let them just say the whole city without... Anyways, they don't pray with כוונה, so let them just say the whole city without כוונה. But, but, our parents will do this as פסק הלכה. I'm not afraid. We do this here sometimes, after the Amidah. If we don't have time, or the has been too long, or whatever, we'll just say, Alem Shabbat and go home. What about Tachanun? What about Ashri Yashri? Says everyone says Ashri Yashri three times a day, goes to Gan Eden. Good, go to Gan Eden when you're at work. Right now, there are people that have been here for a long time. We'll randomly do a half repetition of the Amidah, whatever, whatever. You know, because it's hard. It's, it's long enough as it is. And not just long. Also, you see that people don't have kind of a... You, you notice the room starts to get a little warm, people start talking, people start going in and out. But then it says shuffling in their chairs. Already you're creating a situation where nobody has kavanah. So now you want to add another prayer? In this month of Elul, people add an extra tehillim. Le David, Hashem, We'll do that on our own time. I refuse to add it into the tefillah. Aside from Shabbat morning. Why? Shabbat morning, we're not really rushing anywhere. And people generally are a little more open-minded on Shabbat morning. There's a little more time to read Tehillim out loud. But it's, a, it's an incorrect thing for us to just keep adding and keep adding and keep adding and you break people. And at a certain point, you have a situation where people don't want to pray anymore. People would come to Mincha and Alvid if they knew it took 30 minutes. But when it takes two hours, they have a hard time coming. The same with all the Tehillim. Mm. Now, who can make these decisions? Every community and the Tamil Chamim that lead that community make those decisions. I can't decide for another rabbi what his Tehillim should look like. But don't be so afraid. The purpose is kavana. The Shulchan Aruch, we learned this in the first class of the Shulchan Aruch. Ma'an writes, it's better to pray a little bit with a lot of kavana than a lot of it without any kavana. And perhaps on that note, I heard from Rabbi Aaron. He said, don't make these the days of awful. Make these the days of, <laughs> make these the days of awesome. He said, if you have some awe, it'll be awesome. But if you're full of awe, It'll be awful. <laughs> and you have to know the right approach when you come to Tfilah, to the Sidu. That, that sums it up. That sums it up, yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, you come to, with Tfilah to the proper Hashkafa, the proper approach. And I was just telling my wife tonight, because it's rare that I get a mingle with the greater San Diego community. But I told my wife that I'm very lucky to be here in a community where you put up with all the crazy things we do and the crazy things we say. And, the, and if, if we didn't have that, so we'd have to do all the things that everybody else doesn't like doing. We have a community of people who have a relationship with Hashem, who want to grow, who want to do things right. And uh, that's something special. That's something that we have that I can't say that everybody in the world has. If we're going to make Tefillah a little bit shorter one day, nobody's going to throw stones at our glass windows. If we're going to make Tefillah a little bit longer another day, nobody's going to come and light our car on fire. Because we have Bo Hashem, <laughs> a, a calm community that connects like Hashem. Without Hashem, we should carry with that attitude throughout the entire season of Stichot, HaRachamim, and Stichot, the time of mercy, of compassion. We'll come to Rosh Hashanah and Kippurim together, breaking down the gates of Shemayim.